Mm. I, I, you, you have a problem with the privatization process? Absolutely. What, it was said to be quite transparent. No, no, that is it. I wrote the pitch on privatization, so I'm not just speaking on newspaper sort of analysis of this. See, there are four criteria you have to consider. It's not just the price competitiveness, which is what everybody talks about being uh, transparent. It's not just that. You have to talk about people who understand the, the technology of the business, those who have uh, experience in managing the business, and those who have the best business plan. In identifying those you should privatize to, you have to take all these four criteria into account. I've spoken extensively about their written extensively, but we've never done that. We always stop short of doing that. So we end up passing things on to a private investor who has no clue about the technology or who has no business plan at the time he's bidding for it and who really cannot vet the equipment they are buying. So the consumer has to wait six months, one year, or, or worse than that. So privatization doesn't stop with price transparency. No, no. That's just a major factor. But there are three other major considerations. Whether you are privatizing telecoms, power, uh, refineries, or what have you. Those are the considerations. And I think that uh, we'll have to make an effort in the course of the new administration to go back and vet some of these things, like power. From the unborn process to the privatization of generation, I've seen uh, on your program people talk about the fact that, oh, it's gas that's the constraint. Well, these are all supposed to have been taken into consideration from the onset of the privatization. If you get somebody who knows the business, who has the muscle to fund it, who has the technical knowledge, he will identify all this ab initio. And you know, you may not get the small buyers to get involved, but the big ones can at least get involved, and the small buyers can do sort of on the lead or, or as, the, as the project grows, they can buy into it. Right. Well, we've made a big mistake there. It's talking about uh, fixing the economy here. This gas uh, challenge we've got, they've always talked about it, even before the privatization. So, surprising to many if they didn't actually consider that whilst that one went on. How can we remedy this situation now that we are where we are with power? Well, um, first of all, there are a number of problems. The first one is to look at the very timing, you know, where do we go back to the unbundling process and then the, followed by the privatization of uh, generating plants. Uh, ideally, uh, the question of privatization is not the problem. It's the composition of the, of the policy and the timing. Uh, privatization should assist the economy to move on to a wall stage where you're actually exposing some of this investable channels to big investors, those who have the muscle financially, technically, and otherwise, to take it on. And then it begins to now uh, permeate the rest of the society. But we've tended to maybe do it too quickly for some sectors, like power. Ideally, by the time you are privatizing, we should really be closer to like nine, ten thousand megawatts. I mean, I'm not expert by any long shot on the engineering aspects of things. But when you are at that level, uh, you can afford to make some mistakes. But when you're at 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 megawatts, you have to be absolutely careful because the slightest uh, error, you are down, you are told you are below, you are generating less than 1,000, 2,000, which is, which is absurd for the size of our economy, even given the size of manufacturing GDP. It's still too small. So we have to go back and do a very quick review of the whole process, from the unbundling process to the privatization process. I agree that you cannot just roll this back. So you identify the problems, and government has to take action to remedy some of this okay. by discussing with all those who are involved in, with the two processes. Now, clearly, you have to take all these things in tandem, both the question of generation, this question of transmission and distribution. You have to take it in tandem, yeah, just including before. all the all the ancillary facilities that will make this chain to yeah. work and deliver to the final consumer, whether it's households or industry or what have you. Well, we're talking about a review. The, the question then will be, was there any Nigerian company that we could say 
had the capacity, I mean, for the other conditions that you have mentioned. Because uh, yeah, as see, I say, the versus that of... That is the fundamental error. You see, privatization is, is getting to the global mm. stage. You don't really care whether the company comes from Honduras or from Russia or from Argentina or what have you. Could we have afforded that? Because they say that power is critical infrastructure. How do you mean it's also, it's, that? It's also that, a the, security you, infrastructure. You get to the stage where, well, you see, this is the problem. For the, for the uh, small-scale user, what mm -hmm. he wants is power. He's not interested in the politics of your security and so on and so forth. But that's government to take care of that. So what I'm saying is that you have to first and foremost give this to those who are able to deliver. We have uh, the Siemens of this world, the G's of this world, there are so many of them, and they can work with Nigerian companies. But I can be rest assured that the standards are international standards, that the funding is adequate, that the engineering is right, that the market, stu market study is right, that there's a complete understanding of the whole chain of uh. gas gathering to gas supply and so on. Otherwise, you are just cutting your nose to spike your face. Right. So this notion of talking about in terms of security, you know, in those days we talked about the commanding heights of the economy, why it should not be this. That is all hard now. Nigeria is a much bigger economy. We should be industrializing faster. And speaking about that, yes. I mean, many are waiting to see what policy direction, monetary and fiscal policies, what should we be doing now? How do you mean? You mean the government? This government, yes, because many well, want to the, see the, what direction well, the, they The go. government, I presume, is, is trying to sort out so many things, but evidently one would not be surprised that people are getting a little bit leery. You need a broad-based uh, cabinet-level executive council consideration so that you can go in-depth into every single one of these sectors, from information to power to health to education. So we need to quickly uh, create a larger executive capacity within the presidency to address these issues. And I believe that that's where the, where the, uh, the government is going. You know, that, that's what we have to do. We, 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 can't, uh, we can't take it much, much more than, say, uh, another three, four weeks at the most. We well, really have to begin Would to you get, love to see a, yes. an injection of some fresh uh, individuals or key players in the National, uh, in the, uh, National Economic Council? Well, um, I think so. I think, I think we are in a vantage point where we need to review all these things. Here is an economy that should really be moving up very, very quickly. I mean, it was a shocker, given the, the way we were, as it were bobbing and weaving. And we still ended up being 26th largest economy. You know, I was very familiar with the various stages of the of the rebasing, you know, I used to go to Washington and pick up the, the progress reports for so many countries. So we just happen to be one of them. But we are one of those, when you are at that level, you are one of those supposed to be really growing very fast. You don't need somebody to tell you that. With the size of the potential labor force, with the growth of that labor force, given our birth rate and so on and so forth, we should be providing so much more employment. Okay, there are, there are, Cases for all these special employment generating things. But the main thing has to come from the main real sectors, agriculture, manufacturing, infrastructure, and so on and so forth, you know. So we have to get those growing. Uh, agriculture should be growing at nothing less than 8 to 9 percent. And industry should be maybe 15 percent. It's quite possible. We are growing at those rates in the 60s, even before we had the kind of structure we have now in terms of our potential spending capacity and therefore leverage borrowing capacity. So we need to beef up executive capacity. All right, uh, very interesting. Uh, thank you very much for coming on this morning. It's a pleasure. Uh, Dr. Kalu Dekakalu is a former Minister of Finance.